Bandwidth for Cincinnati Soccer Talk is provided by Cincy Shirts. Get your locally sourced FC Cincinnati MLS merch today by heading over to cincyshirts.com. And welcome to Cincinnati Soccer Talk special edition of CST Live at Buffalo Wings and Rings here on the east side of Cincinnati. Glad you're with us here in the mobile Cincy Shirt Studios. I'm Nick Struggling. Yes, I'm in Cincinnati. Take a picture. It actually happens again. <laughs> Pleased to be here. We've got Rob Pierce. Give it up for Rob Pierce, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, it's uh, nice to be on the west side, or east side. What? East side. <laughs> <laughs> I blame it on the wings. I had some hot wings earlier. They were so hot, Brad had to towel me down uh, earlier, so I, I, I blame it on the wings. Well, it's good to have you here, Rob. I'm glad that this next gentleman had a chance to take some PTO to be with us tonight. Mr. PTO himself, Boston Razzle Dazzle Brazzle in the house. Awesome. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it was a really far drive for me today. I, I live down the street, so uh, right in my neighborhood. Kind of kind of works out well. <laughs> well As well. So. Go Dutch Lions. That's right. And last but not least, can I get a wolfhound sound for the wolf man, Bill Wolf? How's it going, Bill? Good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> you excited to be here? I am. I am. Always great to come out to Buffalo Wings and Rings and get some good food. Of Cincinnati Sock Talk here in just a few moments. We're going to be joined by the man of the hour, Spencer Ritchie, goalkeeper for FC Cincinnati. Let's give it up for Spencer. Before we get with Spencer here in just a few moments, let's recap what happened on Saturday. FC Cincinnati scored a goal, and they won! <laughs> you, Bill. Um, a change at the head, but hey, you know what? They go out. They, they played for each other. They played for the crowd. They just seemed to be having so much fun out there. It was just it was incredibly entertaining to watch and to be part of. What's interesting is I could tell everybody who was at the game this weekend because you all have red faces from all the sunburn. <laughs> yep. True. Notice I don't have that. Rob, you don't have it either because you were sitting high up in the press box, but I'm sure you were pretty hot up there in all that glass. Yeah, I was a little <laughs> concerned there when I first got settled in and everything, but uh, the sun went behind the press box and I wound up fine. Um, Bill, Bill mentioned a key word, fun. Uh, this looked like a team that we hadn't seen in weeks. Uh, it just looked like a completely different team out there, and uh, uh, credit to them, they, they rallied around and kind of banded together. In, uh, in a tough circumstance. So they, they just looked completely different, I think. They did. Boston, what do you attribute that to? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was something special. I, I attribute it to several things. I attribute it to, um, I think it was coming anyway. Um, I think that these, these forwards are starved. Um, I think this team has been searching for that goal. And, and let's be honest that they've hit the woodwork what, four or five times in the yeah. last few weeks, and they hit the woodwork again in the seventh minute, but uh, Alan Cruz, uh, it bounced in. Finally, finally the goalpost was our friend. Yes. And, uh, and so, you know, credit to Cruz. It was a beautiful chip. Uh, but, no, I, I, I do think it was coming. I think that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan. I've been preaching for weeks about a three-man back line on, D, on, on attack, and I really like that switch. Um, and I think that's a big part of it. But I also just liked uh, how we ran out. I lo love that we started Frankie Amaya, uh, give the, uh, the young 18-year-old. He's hungry. You know, you saw, you saw him on, uh, on Saturday. He, he played like there was a, a fire between his legs. Yeah. And uh, just absolutely uh, amazing with the, with the ball and the footwork. One thing we saw from FC Cincinnati, especially on that goal, Bill, and a lot has been made of this over the last few days, uh, the fact that there was a 16-pass buildup that led to the goal from Alan Cruz. Something we really haven't seen from the orange and blue this year, uh, although we haven't seen a lot of goals of late, but the fact that there was a 16 pass buildup uh, from the back to the forward, ball in the net, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. No, and, and you know, for people who've followed Cincinnati Soccer Talk for a long time, I'm obviously a, a big fan of the team-based scoring. Uh, instead of just the one guy gets the ball and runs up there and scores, I like it when the whole team gets involved. There was that one goal, um, Gosh, I get, was that year one or year two? That Stevenson, I, that's Stevenson, right. Stevenson, exactly, yep. that, where it was a bunch of passes and quick passes between the team. I love that stuff. It's, it's really entertaining and fun to watch. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, it does lead us down that path a little bit towards this idea of identity or style, right? Um, something that we've been looking for for the team, um, to see them connecting that many passes when that's been absent in the past shows there is a different mentality and a different identity to this team already. 
Uh, I think I think this is a stat from Matt Doyle. If you guys follow Extra Time at all, Matt Doyle uh, tweeted out that the team was averaging 2.7 passes before they would lose the ball. In that case, we got 16 passes for the first goal, and I think it was 11 passes for the second goal. Yeah. So. You know, that many completed passes in a row shows a, a different identity, a different mentality within the team. And, and it's fun. Yeah, it was fun to watch for sure. I mean, it was, a, it was like a night and day, a different team to watch there in that first half. Uh, well, we should talk a little bit about VAR. It was our friend over the weekend, Rob. Uh, looked like Montreal scored a goal there in the first half, but thankfully the, the VAR gods, as Ken likes to call them. Ken, if you didn't know, Ken Hetker loves VAR. It's his favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Not. <laughs> but they were on our side Saturday, though. Yes, yes, they were. Um, I did not have the best advantage, uh, perspective, I guess I should say, uh, looking down from the press box and whether it was offside or not. Um, it seems that the consensus is that it should have been a goal. Uh, I but will we'll not, take it. Yeah, I will neither <laughs> confirm nor deny. Like I said, my, my vantage point wasn't the best. But, um, I mean, they went to VAR, and VAR said the call stood. So, I mean, I guess VAR did what it was supposed to do. Well, it's a tricky situation, you know. In that case, in that particular case, you know, you send it down to the head ref. Is it the head ref's decision to to uh, go review it himself or not? And it, because it was ruled not a goal on the field, um, in those type of situations, VAR is unlikely to overturn, and sure. I think that's where we ended up. Well, I, I think it comes down to: Does the VAR see something? different than what the AR saw. And in this case, if I mean, people have been posting social media and all kinds of stuff with lines drawn. And I, I think it's really, really too close to call in a lot of cases. I mean, it was, it was right on the edge. Yeah. And to be fair to Montreal, um, I think the AR did it wrong. Uh, I mean, the way it's supposed to work with the AR is, is if it's that close, the AR really should not raise their flag. They should let it play out and then let the AR make the decision. In this case, when the VAR was brought in, there was already a decision made that was offside. So if you can't really tell, you just go with what's on the field, would yeah. be my guess. Yeah, so. probably hindsight, they probably should have let the play kind of play out. Yeah. Uh, but, hey, again, our game there. You so know, that's, that's soccer, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't always work out right. It doesn't always work out, you know, in your favor. But sometimes it does, and you take it. It's a goal either way, or it's not yeah. a goal either way. So, so FC Cincinnati goes into the halftime locker room uh, up 1-0, Rob. And then in the second half, they get another goal off another 11-pass buildup, as Bill said. Fataya Lache getting on the score sheet for FC Cincinnati. Uh, again, great buildup play and a great finish. Yeah, that's what these uh, short um, passes can lead to, is you had some nice buildup play, and then all of a sudden Lamaze down the right side, and then he crosses over to, um, to Fataya Lache, who set himself up perfectly. And I think that is the, uh, just the culmination of what uh, Dame was trying to do. Yeah. And, and Bertone, let's be fair, uh, a lot of folks, especially amongst CS tiers, uh, a lot of folks have been hard on him. Uh, but that pass to Spring Lama really set up the play. Yeah, I thought he had a quiet night, quiet night overall, but that was uh, his redeeming quality right there, getting that pass in. And, and honestly, the second goal was a lot prettier than the first goal, if, if you break it down tactically. Uh, it took a little bit more skill, a little bit more working in, even though it's only 11 passes. But, yeah. you know, I was really extremely, pr uh, you know, I was pleased with the team getting that second goal. If they can do, I, I, what I really like is if you go back and you watch it and, and you see the runs everybody makes on the second goal, that's what we need more of. If, if, if FC Cincinnati starts making runs like that, we'll score every game. It, because there are times we get down in that box area and, and where guys just crosses, and I, ho I, hope, I hope to see a lot more of that. So if you had to give a man of the match, Boston, who would you give? Frankie Amaya. All right. I just, it's just hard to pass up uh, the, the young guy coming back in for a second MLS start and then just playing phenomenal. You know, I think what I love about him is that he's just got no quit. He doesn't care that he's going against guys that have been in the league six or seven years. He's going to uh, use his footwork to his advantage, and he does, no, he's not afraid of anything. He'll take it on. How about you, Rob? Also Frankie Amaya. I thought he uh, showed a lot of heart. Um, very scrappy out there. And uh, I, I, I wish that we could see more and more of him, and I, I hope that we do, and I, I, I think that we will. I already posted it on Twitter, so I can't take it back. I said Frankie Amaya as well. Uh, I love the kid's uh, tenaciousness. Uh, I love his vision on the ball. I love his ideas out there. He's very creative, um, and I think he brings something to the team that, that you know, adds a lot. Um, I, I did want to add a little bit to that second goal, which was you know, Frankie came off the field, Yoan puts in Alashe and he scores within what, like three minutes? Yep. I mean, 
how, how much better can you do as a coach but to make a, a tactical change and three minutes later uh, get the uh, game-winning goal basically off your sub. So, you know, credit to him as well to see what needed to happen there. So I'm going to say somebody different. And maybe he didn't have a man-of-the-match performance, but I think we all had our eyebrows raised when we saw Mr. Open himself, Justin Hoyt, <laughs> listed at center back for FC Cincinnati, right? <laughs> get some Hoyt fans in here. Hey, but you know what? They plugged him in at center back, and honestly, it didn't look like they missed a, they missed a beat there. No, he, he did great. I mean, uh, it, I think that's something that maybe has been lacking a little bit in the back is when you have two large center backs like Hagland and Waston, they're both good players, but they're bringing a very similar thing to the back line, right? They're both tall, they're good on the, in the air, etc. cetera. Um, uh, Hoyt, you know, he's a different player. I mean, we know he's a little <laughs> older. We know he's not going to be quite as fast. He's obviously not as tall as far yeah. as getting headers. But that's what Waston can do, right? Hoyt is, is, is the mind. I mean, he's got the brilliance that he's been playing this game for so long at such a high level. Uh, he could tactically make decisions that help the team. And I, I think we saw some of that a little bit in the, in the game. So FC Cincinnati gets a 2-1 win over the Montreal impi- uh, Impact. They get off the schneid. Back to winning ways. I think we can all enjoy that, right, folks? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a, a brief timeout. We're going to get rearranged up here. We're going to welcome in Spencer Ritchie to the show. Let's give it up for Spencer. We'll be back here in just a moment from Buffalo Wings and Rings on Beachmont. Hey, that was a quick timeout. We're back here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. I love it when I can scare the servers. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're here with Spencer Ritchie, everybody. Thank you for having me. First of all, um, let's talk a little bit about your journey here to Cincinnati. When you were you know, becoming a professional soccer player, did you ever envision yourself you know, up in the upper northwest, <laughs> out in all the rain, that you were going to be starring for an MLS team here in Cincinnati, Ohio. I mean, can you believe that? Here it's, in Cincinnati? I know. In all no, the rain. It's, it's <laughs> in all the rain. <laughs> all the rain. <laughs> it's like home, right? No, it's crazy how it's worked out. Um, you know, I haven't had the most uh, prototypical, you know, rise to now. Um, sometimes that's the life of a goalkeeper or, you know, a defensive player for that mind. Sometimes, you know, they kind of get their chance later in their career. It's not as important um, for them, you know. You know, like a Frankie Amaya, somebody who's 18 and you can throw him out there and, yeah. you know, and, and he performs and contributes. So, um, no, I had to grind my way up a little bit through um, through the USL and, and um, the Whitecaps team up in, in Vancouver. So, um, you know, I, Alan was kind of my connection. He drafted me to Vancouver and then um, I signed for the MLS team up there, but still wasn't playing. And that was um, the connection of coming on loan here last year and then. Um, kind of with the potential long-term plan that with this team making the jump to the MLS as well that, um, you know, potentially it could, it could work out for the better, and, and it has. So it's been pretty fun. I think we're all glad it did, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and we, were all, we were all very impressed with you last year. You had a great season. Uh, you know, we, we did bold predictions at the beginning of this season, and my bold prediction 
and this guy made me look really smart, <laughs> is that you were going to be our starting keeper by the end of the year. I appreciate that, man. So we got a lot of faith in you. Now, as a guy who came up from the USL days here in FC Cincinnati last year, won a, won a championship, coming to MLS, what did when, being a part of that team that won the first match here in FC Cincinnati, what did that mean to you, especially starting uh, that, that game versus Portland? Man, it was crazy. I mean, I, I had experienced Nippert to its full effect last year, right? But the Portland game was just something special to it, um, you know, and to do it in 3-0 fashion. Um, and, and almost get to enjoy the win, you know, over the last 10, 12 minutes when the game's basically wrapped up. Um, it was it was insane. I was getting the chills during the game listening to the supporters. I probably should have been a little <laughs> bit more focused on the task at hand, but uh, um, it, it was probably the most fun game I've ever played in. So. Awesome. So, so take us through, like, a weekly preparation. You know, what, what do you do with Jack? How do you prepare for a game? Uh, what, do you, what do you do as far as, you know, profiling the attacking players that you're going to be facing yep um so say if it's a given you know saturday to saturday home game um we'll, we'll push a little bit more in the week um you know tuesday wednesday jack usually does a scout um of the opposing uh, attacking players um upwards of like an hour of video that he'll send out um so we try to you know we try to watch that earlier in the week so that we can, you know, fine tune um, things if there's big tendencies. And I remember the LAFC game, you know, both of their wingers, Rossi and Vela, were guys that cut in and they whip it far post and <laughs> score almost every time they do it. So um, that was something, just an example of something we worked on in training of, um, well, Jack was trying to emulate Vela, which is kind of funny, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, little things like that. If teams, um, you know, like leading up to Red Bull, they're a team that sends in the most crosses in the whole league. So that was a point of emphasis. Um, you know, we have our Friday, our tune-up session. It's the same every week. Um, there's certain things that we like to stick to. Um, just, you know, it gives you confidence. Um, you know, it keeps you sharp in areas that, that we, you know, enjoy, that we care most about. And then there's also a component of trainings each week that are, um, you know, designed to to prepare you for the weekend is it how i mean how, when does the decision come as far as who's going to be a starter is that like a last minute thing or do you know early in the week or um it can be all the above okay. um most might of be different them, now too maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah. um no we we knew a few weeks ago um they sat uh, t and i down and said they were going to pl- alternate this game starting with the salt lake um so then he got new york i got philly and then he got san jose San Jose. Yeah. Um, and then that they were going to make a decision potentially on a starting goalkeeper the following week. So then obviously that was the plan with Allen and, um, you know, obviously with the coaching change now, um, I don't know if it's a permanent decision at this point. Um, but, you know, I was, you know, pleased to hear that, that Yo was going to start me in his first game and, um, you know, hopefully he can, hopefully he can keep it that way. I want to talk a little bit more about Jack Stern, uh, goalkeeper coach for FC Cincinnati. Now, Bill and I had the chance to see you down at IMG last year, and I saw this man walking around with an exercise ball. And I'm wondering, what the heck is he doing with an exercise ball out on a soccer field? I mean, he put you through some pretty crazy drills. I, 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 never, I knew you guys were athletic. I just didn't appreciate how athletic goalkeepers were until I saw you working with Jack along with Evan and Mark last year. I mean, it was incredible what he had you guys running through. It's, it's a funny position. It's, it's why I kind of started, um, you know, of course when I was younger I wanted to play striker and score goals. But uh, I've always been a kid that enjoyed, you know, baseball, football, basketball. I played them all for as long as I can until my soccer coaches told me I was being an idiot um, <laughs> and made me quit. But, no, it's a fun position. You, you have to train, you know, head to toe every component of your body, all your limbs, all your coordination. Um, the physio ball he uses as, like, a, a reaction drill, kind of like a header because he can't really head the ball. <laughs> or, or me, really. I'm sure he thinks he can, but, right? Eh, he doesn't even try, honestly. Oh, okay. <laughs> so No, he just admits it. But, no, so uh, it's kind of a reaction drill. There's no way of reading you know, maybe a finisher you can read, oh, he's going to go here, he's going to, you know, he's going to hit it firm, he's going to place it. With the physio ball, it's totally random. So um, it keeps you honest, um, yeah, and it keeps you sharp in those uh, close-range type of situations. This, now, you've been around a lot of goalkeeper coaches uh-huh. in, in your career here. I happen to notice that Coach Stern wears his keeper mitts throughout the game. Is that normal? Do a lot of keeper coaches do that? Some, some do, yeah. Some, okay. they just kind of... 
and it's the same for me. Sometimes when I'm striking a ball and I don't have my gloves on, I feel all off okay. balance. It feels weird. So, um, no, I like you know get some volleys after the the walkout before the game and at halftime. So, um, it probably just makes me feel comfortable. It's one of those things you probably feels naked without a mind. You know, like when you don't have your phone or something and you, you feel all out of whack or I think it's like that. So you finally had a game where it wasn't raining. How how that how that feel first off? No, it was. It said it might rain too throughout the week. It was going back and forth, and um, no, I was I was hoping for weather mostly for the you know the supporters' sake to you know for for some people that that maybe aren't a huge fan of the rain or might you know steer them away from coming. Um, you know, it helps the atmosphere, and um, as long as it's not like the Philly game, which was yeah, yeah, that was pretty miserable. Um, no, it was it was incredible. So as a keeper. Do you have any differences when you prepare for a rainy game versus a dry game or your, your gloves are different? You know, what, what goes into that planning? For sure. Um, I have, so like in a given week, I will usually bust out a pair of new gloves like two days before. I kind of break them in a little bit. Um, but going into a game, I'll always have a newer pair. Um, and then I'll always have a pair from the previous game that are a little bit more worn in. Sometimes, especially with the game balls, sometimes they take them right out of the bag, blow them up, and that's the game ball. So it's they're super slick. Um, so it definitely, I mean, I'll, I'll go all the way up until right before the game, and I'll put one glove on that's a week old and one glove on that's two days old, and I'll uh, just compare which one feels better on the ball and, and uh, decide from there. Playing-wise, for sure, I mean, it's especially on turf, and it's slick, and you, you got to make safer decisions. You end up pairing and punching balls that maybe, you know, on a day like yesterday you try to catch. Um, so, no, it's a huge factor. Now, you've been, I'm sure you've worked with plenty of coaches. Jack Stern's been great. We've got a lot of young goalkeepers out here in the crowd tonight. Is there a piece of advice that one of the coaches or Jack Stern have gave you that has kind of led you to this point or, or kind of big reason why you've succeeded? I think it's like the mentality and the perseverance of the position. I think without that, you just, no matter how good you are, you don't have a chance. Um, it's so few people have you know a rise where they go in the league and they're a starter and it's smooth sailing and they never screw up it's just not it's not a reality of the sport the margins are thin the players are too good there's you know the game happens too fast so um, for me the most important thing and and I think that's you know probably why I've had success over the last years it's probably tested you know my perseverance and um, you know just kind of sticking to the path of, of knowing that you know, if I show up every day and I try to, you know, Im- improve and work hard and, and uh, you know, prepare myself for when I do get a chance to play, then when that chance comes, then, you know, it's not just an, oh, crap, I've, you know, been good for a week or two weeks, but I'm nervous. It's no, you know, you've been mentally, physically, you know, on the field, off the field. You've been preparing for this opportunity, and, and hopefully you can make the most of it. Let's talk about your teammates a little bit. So when, when you're, <laughs> this is always fun. When, when, no, no, this is more of a soccer go, uh, question. When you're, when you're between the posts, right, who, who is the player that takes a shot that makes you cringe a little bit when you have to stop it? And who's, who's the one that, that just plays mental games with you and you never know what they're going to do? Hmm, that's tough. I don't like it when Manu scores on me because he's <laughs> an emotional guy and he celebrates after every even during goal, practice. even in training. Yeah. So I... <laughs> Yeah, so I always try a little bit harder on his, and he's one of the best finishers on the team from the top of the box. So um, I would probably say him and Kenny are the two that will kind of, after they score, you know, they'll dig into you a little bit. And so those are the most, uh, and of course, if I save it, I give it back. So, it's, you know, they might say the same with me and that. So I don't know. So those are the ones that kind of play mental games with you. Who's, yeah. got, who's got the shot that you don't want to have to put your hand in front of? Hmm. <laughs> or maybe there's That's no tough. one. It could. It also could probably be Manu. Manu, yeah, he's got a strong. Yeah, yeah. he okay. he strikes the ball extremely well. It, is there a guy that you've played against or are hoping to play against in the league that you either are scared of or hope you could make a save on, like Zlatan? No, I mean I, even though like Zlatan and I are in, you know in the same league but completely different you know states in our career or or a success to this point. I I like to. You know, especially, you know, when the game starts to just kind of consider everyone an equal. You know, sometimes when it's pretty cool to be in the tunnel and you look across and you see a Wayne Rooney or, or Carlos Vela, but um, at the end, you know, 
when the game starts, it doesn't matter, you know. So if I, uh, you know, am starstruck during the game, then may maybe it'll affect, uh, you know, my yeah. mindset. So, no, I just try to kind of keep everybody on, on the same playing field. So That, that reminds me, down in Atlanta, mm -hmm. Joseph Martinez, I mean, your facial reaction after that ball goes over your shoulder was priceless. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was uh, not how I wanted my first uh, five minutes uh, of the season to, to play out. So, um, but no, that was that was an, an insane game and uh, was pretty cool, you know, to get out with a tie. And, and uh, you know, that was probably what sparked our, our run um, at the beginning of the season. So. Obviously, we know Nippert is a, a fantastic crowd. And playing in Atlanta, I mean, For sure. first time there, I mean, was it as loud as it sounded on TV? It was crazy. It was definitely, yeah, like, <laughs> my ears were ringing after the game. Really? It was that loud. A lot, the sound system was a big factor. Um, but I think that was their first home game as well. Yep. And I think that they raised the banner right before the game. So, I mean, they're obviously supporters were in a good mood. And, um and not afterwards. That, no, not afterwards. That's no, right. No, not lately at all, actually. So, um, no, it was pretty cool. Cool. Um, let's talk about um, one of your uh, charity organizations. You, yeah. you just signed up for Playing for Pride. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, maybe um, the details here. Yeah, so I, I mean, it, it was, uh, it's, you know, I, I grew up uh, in Seattle. It's a very liberal um, a city and, and culture up there. Um, actually, my uh, best friend from growing up um, came out when he was probably 20 in college, um, and it was just kind of an eye-opening experience for me. Um, and to 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 hear and see, you know, the way that some people address the the gay communities um, can be disgusting at times. So uh, it's you know we're in a cool position, and that's uh, uh, there's you know, tons of charities and organizations that I would love to be able to support. And, um, but that was one that was close to my heart. Um, and so it, it means a lot for me. He's actually going to ordain my wedding that's coming up in December Very too. Cool. So it's pretty Very cool. Nice. So, so give the details on, on how this works for people who want to get involved. Yeah. So I don't know specifically what I'm going to do like dollar for dollar yet, but essentially you say, okay, for every, um, game that I start in June, I'll donate five. Every shutout I have, I'll donate 20. And then um, I didn't do it last year, but this year I'm going to do something where, um, you know, if people match my donations, then I'll, I'm going to make some kind of like raffle with um, some like signed cleats and, and a pack of tickets to the game and um, can, can like come down on the field after and stuff. So um, I don't know yet. I got still got a couple weeks to, yeah, yeah. It to starts, figure it, it out. Yeah, it starts in so, June. So. Right? So yeah, okay. But it's cool. I know a lot of guys do it, um, and uh, the the guy Austin um, I've met before that kind of runs the the Playing for Pride account and, and down in, in North Carolina. He does a great job. So um, it's pretty cool. It, it 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 catches fire. It's I mean they'll have probably fifty sixty players on there and they're doing it as well. So and then we'll we'll get the information. But, Absolutely. But sure. people can can log yeah, yeah. in and they can basically follow. Uh, what your donations are yep. from the time you're playing and they can match or or whatever yep. those donations. So. Yep, it's cool. Perfect. So everybody knows the elephant in the room here. We had a, 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 the dismissal of Alan Koch on social media. How how important was it for you guys to band together to get through that and then go into Saturday? You know, you win the match, which is great. Uh, what did you guys have to do as a team unit to get through this process? For sure, and and it was kind of like that was the the final straw. You know, we had gone, I mean, countless games without scoring, winning. Um, you know, and, and then obviously the the club makes the decision to dismiss Allen. At that point, it's kind of like we're rock bottom almost. You know, we and there's only one way to go, and that was up. And we, um, you know, we kind of met as a team, and um, both with the staff and, and and just some of the players, and just like small conversations with a couple guys. You know, just saying. Um, you know, to just to, to stay positive, to be encouraging. Um, Sometimes when you're losing games, it's easy to, to get down or be negative for sure. Um, but it's such a long season, and the MLS is, is a bizarre league um, of how teams can can get hot and win seven in a row. They can get mm -hmm. cold and lose seven in a row uh, in the locker room, and um, I think that you're going to see that, uh, especially for these next few games. Now, how important was it for you guys to have somebody you trusted like Yoan, 
you know, at the helm over this, you know, you respect the guy. We've heard a lot of great For things sure. about him. How important was that to, to have him still here and with you guys? Yeah, it is important. You know, sometimes when uh, a, a head coach gets dismissed, um, you know, the entire coaching staff goes with him. That just happened um, for my club in Vancouver last year when I was on loan here. Um, it, it's good because obviously the, the head coach is, you know, one of, if not the most, you know, important role in, in terms of the staff. But, um, you know, the, the releasing of him kind of also gives everybody a reset button in a way. You know, guys that maybe haven't played, um, that, you know, for one, one reason or another haven't gotten as many minutes. Um, you know, it, it's, a good, it's a good balance of it's a reset button. You know, it's kind of a clean slate for a lot of guys. But also, um, you know, there's some, you know, with Yo and Jack and Postle being around, um, it's not a total change. So it's not like... You know, we're back at ground zero. We can kind of take some of the positives that we've had um, throughout the season and, and try to, you know, acknowledge them and say, the, you know, these are the things when we've played well. We've done these things well. Let's get back to doing these things. Um, you know, and the coach staff and you know, have done a great job with that. Well, one of the big changes this week is, you know, people notice is your footwork and your passing out of the back. Is yeah. Has that, that been a little bit of a change? For sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's more fun playing that way, no <laughs> doubt. It's, I mean, even as a goalkeeper, I've uh, – I enjoy, um, you know, being connected to the back four. And, and I think you saw on the weekend that there's plenty of good players on this team. And, um, you know, and when we kind of have the collective mindset, all right, this is what we want to do. Um, then when a guy receives the ball, he just has more options, more, you know, guys were moving more. Um, and it was pretty fun. I saw, I don't even know who tweeted it. It could be one of you guys. But <laughs> that we had 401 passes in, in the first half, which is more than our season average for an entire game. So. Uh, I think that, you know, and both the goals came from, from good build-up mm -hmm. from run-of-play. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I think that's something we'll try to do this weekend. It's going to be hot in Orlando, oh, yeah. so we're going to need to keep the ball. Speaking of hot, you've got some hot food takes. I do. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that most people love that you won't eat? I hate pickles. Really? So t like. Well, you'd fit in right with my family. I'm the only one in my family who eats pickles. I, yeah, so. like I don't even – want it on the plate like i don't want the juice to touch the bun of my burger or anything like that. that just ruins the burger none of that absolutely um that's a pretty common one that, that i that's don't that's not like. a hot food take that's just normal <laughs> yeah but a lot of people like I pickles disagree. i like pickles yeah so i don't know besides that <laughs> i used to not like avocado but that's it's really good for you so i've kind of been so training it's growing myself on you a little bit yeah yeah uh how but. about do you do no cone with your ice cream big cone guy yeah? Big cone guy, yeah. What's your ice cream order? Mm, I'm kind of a like plain chocolate and a waffle cone. I'm kind of boring with my ice cream order. Um, <laughs> cone first or waffle? No, sorry. I like the waffle. H have you waffle over sugar for sure. Have you had graters at least around here? I have. It's very good. What's the salted caramel is probably there my favorite. There you go. Go to. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Hmm. I mean, we're at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Wings and maybe Rings. There's, maybe, there's, maybe there's something strange here we can fix up for them. Although um, you might not be allowed to eat at this. My week. my uh, <laughs> hot dog sandwiches oh, freaks a lot of people out. It's a Seattle <laughs> thing. Put cream cheese, <laughs> like there we burger go. bun, cream cheese, slice the hot dogs in half, lamb flat hot dog sandwich with cream cheese. And that's a Northwest like a Seattle it's thing. Called a, Se a Seattle dog, yeah. Interesting. Very good. Is that a cheat day food or is that a For, sure. For sure. I don't eat hot dogs that often. Yeah. Yeah. I had pizza yesterday. That was my cheat day. Where'd you go? I got Goodfellas. Oh, that's good pizza. Very good. Very good. So on a cheat day besides Goodfellas, what is some of your fun favorite or fun things to do around town? Mm. Or your your fiance's favorite things to do around town? We big she is also a big foodie. Um I would say the Eagle I love, Kruger's I love, Luvino is kind of a new restaurant down there that's very good. Um, what else? I know Leo Bertoni had some opinions about uh, our food. Has he, has he changed, adapted at all? Got I better? don't know. I have, to, I have to speak to him. He's, he uh, enjoys, uh, I think he'll give everything a chance. So yeah. I was trying to explain to him my, uh, the hot dog cream cheese thing and he wasn't having it. So <laughs> I don't really know where I could order that here. But I don't think you can order. Might have to make, might have to make it at home and bring one into training. <laughs> or keep something. making enough saves, and somebody's going to put a Richie yeah, on the menu. That's Trust right. Me. Oh, oh, that would be sick. I right. oh, love that. Well done. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> so you got a big game coming up this week. Yep. Uh, on the road again. 
This time you go to Orlando. Uh, obviously a little bit of a manager history with James O'Connor down there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I can't hear you. What was that? Uh, please. Yeah, there we go. Uh, but they're just ahead of you in the standings. Yep. How big of a, of a matchup is this for you to get three points against, uh, against Orlando this week? Yeah, it's big. And, and uh, you know, it being an Eastern Conference game, I like to think of these almost as six-point games, yeah. especially with a team that is right next to us in the table. And, um, you know, it, it's it's still early in the year, but, um, you know, as many points as you can pick up on the road, and, and especially against, you know, a team in the East, they actually have to fly up to Seattle, coincidentally, and play uh, play them tomorrow. So hopefully with the heat, um, we can take advantage of that and, and some tired legs, um, you know, and, and, and get something out of that game on Sunday. Hey, let's give it up for Spencer Ritchie, everybody. Yeah. We know he's a busy man, saving shots no. left and right. Oh, well, thanks for having we me. We appreciate you being hey, with thank us. You, we man. Really, really do. Appreciate Congratulations thank on you, all the success. Thank you. Spencer Ritchie, thanks, everybody. Hey, we're going to take a timeout. We come back. We're going to talk a little more soccer here on Cincinnati Soccer Talk, live from Buffalo Wings and Rings in Beachmont. Hey, I just want to let you all know, Spencer is gracious enough. He's going to be up front signing autographs, taking pictures if you want to stop by and say hello to Spencer. Let's give him another round of applause. Let's also thank Buffalo Wings and Rings for making this happen tonight. We really appreciate it, guys.
the raffle stuff. I just want to let you know we got one more segment of Cincinnati Soccer Talk left. We're still going to do this raffle up here coming up afterwards, so make sure you get your tickets in. Uh, big shout out, thanks to Grayson, everybody. Grayson made this happy tonight. Grayson, thank you so much here at Buffalo Wings. We, we appreciate you. Thank you again. And we'll, uh, we'll get started here in a moment. And welcome back to Cincinnati Soccer Talk. We're live here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Is Yosef in the house? Yeah. Hey, what's up, Yosef? Hi, Yosef's mom. <laughs> Mrs. Sagai in the house as well. The Sagais are here. Uh, we also have to begin. Let's give a big shout out to Jay Jones, right? Jay Jones, Mr. YouTube sensation right here. If you haven't seen Jay after an FC Cincinnati match, for a fan cam, you're missing out. You gotta check him out afterwards. Talk about the match afterwards. Stand up, Jay, let everybody see you. That's Jay Jones right there. Is Jeremy Miller still in the house? He left off. Oh, Jeremy Miller, he's done a great job this year with our photographer. He's doing a great job with our pictures. Um, I mean, Joe Schmuck also. I gotta give a big shout out thanks to those two. They make us look really good on social media. So let's give a big shout out and thanks to those gentlemen. I mean, photographers don't get the most love, right? Okay, then. No. All right. We, yes, we they know. do. They get a ton of love. <laughs> That's the voice of Trisha Hauser. Give it up for Trisha, everybody. Hello. How are you, Trisha? I am doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, we've also got Ken Heckler, Mr. Stats himself. Hey, we forgot somebody. Joey, our graphics our guy. Graphics yes. guy Joey. Why is he not here? All of our Jays are out of this world. Joey, come on now. Uh, we're, we're, we're excited to have Joey on board. That, that's been a lot of fun. Glad, glad to have you. I've been really excited about your, your stats articles that you've been putting out. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's also welcome in Chris Asbrock, one of the newest members of Cincinnati Sock Talk. Say hello, Chris. Hey, what's up, everyone? That's all I got. That's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> He's our play-by-play -play guy, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, With Cincinnati Dutch Line. Keep it short yeah. and sweet. Me and Boston. Color analyst. That's how we do that's it. Right. And before we move on, Big shout out, thanks to Brad Weigel for getting everything organized. For Brad Sunburn, right here. <laughs> As a fellow ginger, I feel your pain. So let's talk a little bit about what happened last week, right? We know the change in coaching staff. Alan Koch out, Yohan DeMay in. We see the match against Montreal, Ken, and night and day looked like a completely different team. What was it for you that made you, what made you sit there and think, wow, where has this been all along? I think, I mean... I think the e easiest word to say is plan. We had a plan. It, it wasn't sexy, and it, I feel like I'm <laughs> reverbing here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but we had, we, we had a plan, and we stuck to it. We definitely wanted to play out of the back, and it, the game was pretty slow, I think. most of, Everybody noticed as far as the way Montreal played us. They sat back, and we didn't push ourselves to get the – get the goal we didn't lose our shape we stayed within who we were and when we got the goal we, we just kind of played the game out and took our chances when we got them yeah. so I, I just think it was simple Johan had four days or three days and he did what he could and the guys looked comfortable sure. and it looked like there was a trust out there with everybody I probably said everything that you guys have done. <laughs> well, I have nothing to say now. Tell you, my talking points. Now. That's not true because let, let's be honest, right? I mean, Montreal played a game midweek. They're still losing. They didn't have Piotti, their best player, one of the best players in the league. Uh, Sonia came in late, one of their best defenders. But what is it? it wasn't exactly like Montreal was out there pressing FC Cincinnati. 
I mean, they kind of made it easy for them to pass the ball as much as they did. No, I agree, and I think one of the key changes was that our players were in the position they should be playing in. I think everything really worked out. We had our defense that was attacking to really push the ball up the pitch. I think our players were in their natural position. They were having fun. They didn't look miserable, and I think it worked for us. Even though Montreal didn't put their best foot forward, we still played very well in comparison to how we have been playing, and I think... At the end of the day, you just have that little spark of motivation where you play well, and they're just going to build on that and build on that and just do better. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the change, right? Yeah. I think we all kind of saw it coming uh, with the way they had been playing. Is this more of a, okay, let's pump the brakes a little bit. It was Montreal. Yes, it was good to get the win. Let's not get too carried away. Or is this maybe something they can build on? No, I think it's something you can build on. Uh, Montreal was at, you know, towards the top of the standings. I believe they were tied for first at one point. You know, they were ripe for the taking this. And usually after a coaching change, you see a team get a little bit of a boost yeah. going into the next game. And we saw that. I mean, it was just one of those games where, you know, like Trish said, they looked like they were having fun. And they went forward, and, and, you know, you get three points. That's a huge three points right there. Now you continue to build off of that. And, you know, you got very three very, very, very winnable games Absolutely. coming up here. So, you, I mean, against a team like Montreal at home, it was kind of the perfect time to make that change. And we said we saw it coming. It was just a matter of when. It happened, I think, at the right time. And now, obviously, we saw it was a completely different team. And, we, you know, we had talked about that. It seems like, you know, that entire day watching the game, it was night and day. And, this, yeah. you know, this team's rolling now. It's, at least that's what it felt like. So... We'll see what it's going to look, you know, next couple games. Yeah. And we got to see Greg Garza, a guy we haven't seen in a few weeks. Good to see yeah. him out there. Yes. That's right. That's good yes. for Greg Garza. Yes. And he's an important piece to this attack. I mean, yes, he's a, a left back, but he provides the width and service into the box that has been missing. Yeah. I mean, he was the one that went forward. I mean, we had, we had Justin Hoyt, like you said earlier, back in the back with Deplon. It looked like we kind of just <laughs> rotated around and definitely said, we're going to attack the left side, go up on Garza's. Garza's, Garza's side and leave Hoyt back and I think that was a smart again a plan we had a plan and Garza hung back or uh, Hoyt hung back and he's not the fastest guy to recover no. I don't think so uh, and he stayed within himself and I, I, Garza, Garza Garza was great I mean I was shocked he played 90 minutes though. I, I mean, was shocked I, too I, I, yeah I was a little I worried wasn't I'm not going at, was at the 70th minute mark I was sitting up there <laughs> he's he's done and, and then Cruz, Cruz went down injured so but most importantly, three points, right? How three good points. does that feel? I mean, I know. It felt great. Look, it still feels good. <laughs> you, you build on that. I know I, I, we don't know what's going to happen with the manager, manager situation. We don't know how long it's going to be. It could be months. <laughs> Hell, it could be tomorrow yeah. with everything that's happening with this club. But the fact that, look, they hadn't scored a goal in forever, they finally get the win, you build on it. Yeah. Uh, I think Kristen Dreyer just came out and said, Jeff's looking for a GM first. So yeah. I, I, that first, makes sense. We, I mean, mm -hmm. whether that occurs or the manager, I don't know, but it, yeah. that, that's something that just came out. Yeah. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out and thanks to our tremendous supporters here at Cincinnati Sock Talk. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the show, uh, this would not be possible. Things, equipment like this would not be possible without our tremendous supporters. So I have to give a big shout out. Thanks to Kings Hammer and Tim Bronsel, Matt Adamchick, Mama Subes. Brian Malone, Jamie Smed, Jonas Tom, Jack Emery, Mike Bowman, Kathleen Francis, Teresa Everidge, Matt Imhol. I think Matt's in the building, isn't he? We love you, Matt. Hey, Matt, I'm, so I'm sorry about Sunday. Sorry about Sunday, Matt. <laughs> He's not sorry. Don't listen to him. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Long, <laughs> Joe Coling, and Tara Mons. Thank you so much for supporting Cincinnati Soccer Talk. To learn more on how you can do that, head over to CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com slash support so yo gets the win as the manager he's the youngest manager in major league soccer history and in his first try goes out and gets a win that's pretty dang impressive uh for a guy who's only 29 years old he's 10 years younger than i am <laughs> and goes out and gets a win in major league soccer that's crazy i'm not gonna say how many more years younger he is than you but hey hey, <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. Oh, oh. i'll defend you oh. Ken. that was rude <laughs> Age is just a number. Yeah, right. yeah. Great point, King. Great point. Just for Johan uh, and myself. If you see this, if you see this, you would have, yeah, I have no room to talk. But, I mean, the fact that a 29-year-old goes out and gets a win in Major League Soccer, and look, it was, 
pretty easy for him. And he looked the part. Uh, and he spoke the part. I mean, he was very. I mean, he was very concise. He's not going to get up there and do like Koch and give a whole spiel. He was. What I loved, number one thing I loved about Johan was the guys did all the work. Yes. The guys. Yes. Imp- followed the plan. The team did it. And I love that. That's the, always the, I think Brad wrote up an article, how you win back the locker room, give all the credit to the players, take all the blame. And I, I, I see that with him. I know you had to have been excited. I mean, I think it's like with you, you've got this like French connection, right? You're a big fan of Matthew <laughs> Duplan, right? He's kind of your yeah. guy. A little bit. Yeah, and then yo, the Purely the respectful con- level. That's, that's Of course, all. of course. <laughs> That's all we ever hear you talking about. Of course. <laughs> yes. Very respectful. But you had to have been excited for you. I was. It was great to see. And it just goes to show the connection he has with the players. They believe in him. They trust him. He knows what they're capable of. Again, he played them in position. He played to their strengths. And I think that as much as they wanted to do it for each other and for us, I think they also wanted to do it for him. Yeah. And I clearly the locker room respects him. And at the end of the day, that I think that's kind of what was lacking with former leadership. So it's really good to see. So, Jeff Purding, uh, I should say Birding, I don't know why I said Purding. Purding. <laughs> Jeff Close Purding, enough. tomorrow, hands you the keys to the franchise and says, Ooh. go get your coach. Who do you want to see leading the orange and blue? Oh, man, really? Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nothing like putting you on the spot. Oh. Hmm. You want to think about it? I'll go to Ken because I already know his answer. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to think about that one because, you know, I've been saying David Moyes. I, I, I just think that would be, it's a big name. But then again, is it the right fit? I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, you're going to have to come back, Matt. I don't All know. Right. I don't know. We're going to let him. <laughs> yeah. We're going to let Jay him. Says no. like, Jay says Jay no. Knows. Jay knows. Jay says <laughs> no. <laughs> Ken, I think you're leading uh, no. somewhere, uh, somewhere Tab Ramos, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I like Tab. Um, he's Uruguayan. from, So he, he's got sort of a Spanish connection, South American connection. Uh, I mean, he's, he's American, obviously. He played for the 94, 90, 90 and 94 World Cup team. So. Uh, and he's he's a U twenty coach, so he knows he knows Frankie. Yeah. He knows he knows some young players, and I think he's got an eye for talent. And uh, I think it, I think there's some stability in it. Is he the number one? Maybe not, but I, the fact that he's American and he's probably been around enough of MLS, he probably has some of that knowledge. Uh, I think you need a balance, though, so between the GM and who, whomever the coach is. So. Uh, Tab could be the one. I, I like Tab, though. What do you all think? Who do you want to be the next coach? Any names out there? I want to hear it. Robin Frazier. Robin, Robin Frazier from Robin. <laughs> you, you want all the way? You can have him. <laughs> <laughs> you can have him. Matt Warman. Oh, man. <laughs> Matt Warman. <laughs> Where is Matt? <laughs> I think he got relegated down to uh, <laughs> the C, C Cincinnati, whatever soccer city was <laughs> league. Well, Chris Hewton's available now. Yes. He just, exactly. I mean, that was a big move. That I, was a big move. I didn't move. see that one coming. Don't see him coming to the U.S. No, so. I don't either. No. He's not coming here. But Well, we're, we're going to start to wrap things up here at Buffalo Wings and Rings. I just want to remind everybody, who likes foot golf? Everybody likes foot golf, right? <laughs> We've got our annual, our fourth annual, Cincinnati Soccer Talk uh, Foot Golf Classic coming up on August 24th at Woodland Golf Course. 180 bucks gets your foursome into the into the tournament. It's family friendly. Don't worry. It's a good time, and all the proceeds benefit sports games for kids. This is a great charity that uh, our friend, the Cincy Superfan Tom Grabo, puts together. So make sure you come out August 24th at Woodland Golf Course. Uh, it's going to be a good time. We really do appreciate uh, everybody getting registered. Head over to the website CincinnatiSoccerTalk.com/footgolf to do just that. I also want to give a big shout out to a couple of our younger guys at CST. Paul Barbachak's in the house. Can we, can we get, Paul, stand up for me, please. Let's give it up for Paul. Paul's one of our staff writers. He's been hard at work down in that city called Louisville. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he was a trooper. He made the trip up here tonight. Paul, thank you for coming up. And congrats on school year. I think you're done, right? Oh, no. never mind. <laughs> well, one guy we know is done. That's Jacob Clary. He's our staff intern. He's back up in Bowling Green uh, watching this. So congratulations, Jacob, on your graduation uh, from BGSU, that fine institution up north. <laughs> you know what they say about those folks up at BG? Don't even, don't even. Anyway, uh, my thanks again to Grayson from Buffalo Wings and Rings. Thank you so much. 
for letting us do this tonight. Kevin Newton in the house from SEC as well. <laughs> He's making he, – hey, we got to give a big shout-out to everybody. Come on now. And let's hear it one more time for Spencer Ritchie, everyone. <laughs> That's going to do it here from Buffalo Wings and Rings in Beachmont. I'm Subes. Watch your tackles, and we'll see you all next week. All right, you all about ready to win some prizes? All right, get them ready. We're going to do our, uh, our uh, raffle in just a minute.
Which one am I doing first, and what is it for? You want to be on the mic too? 